All right, welcome to this session of Mind Your Business. Uh, I'm Tyler with Seller Accountant, and I'm really excited for today's video on how to properly do an annual financial review for your Amazon business. Uh, you know, what has this year taught you that you can take forward? Um, also, happy SEC Championship Week for any of you guys catching this as we're launching it here on Tuesday. Um, this is going to be a great short session on how to manage your business and your finances better. Let's dive in. It's time to maximize profitability and cash flow. It's time to learn habits and hacks from the best e-com CEOs. It's time for Return on Podcast with me, Tyler Jeffcoat. All right, as the visionary from my company, one of the most important things I do every year is as we get to the end of the year, I find some time to get off grid by myself and I ask myself a series of questions related to uh, what I'm learning, what I want in my life and what I'm going to do to get what I want, right? And so in this video here, again, we're using this uh, end of the year series to talk about minding your business for your uh, Amazon or e-commerce company. And I want to show you specifically what it looks like to do an annual financial review. And I'm going to give you two examples. So again, this is one of those um, episodes that if you're listening to it on podcast, I'm going to try to give you the principles pretty clearly on the uh, kind of audio side of this. Uh, but the YouTube video is going to be a little bit better because I'm going to show you a couple of P&Ls, one of a really unhealthy company, one of a really healthy company. And I'm going to give you some thoughts on how this might dictate what our goals are and what our forecast might look like for 2024. So let's dive into this first one here. The The first company, this is one that Seller Accountant does not do the accounting for these guys. Um, we're just trying to help them, trying to give them some coaching and good, good, good people. Really, really cool company. Um, so what I did when I was reviewing their finances is I actually looked at the P&L and it was a little bit confusing the way their accounting team was organizing it, but I was able to take it and try to simplify it and distill it down to a kind of an annual summary for this company. So we've done about four and a half million dollars in revenue for the year. We've got about half of that going just to, to, to get the product cost landed. So just landed product cost to get sold about half of that entire budget. Um, we've got some logistics and marketplace fees, which are pretty low. And then we have a gigantic marketing budget of 27% of our total is, is our tacos, um, leaving us with a PAG. So remember, um, if you've watched my videos before, post-advertising gross profit, our true gross profit at Seller Account, we call that PAG. For them, it's only 15%. So even though we have a pretty strong top-line revenue business of four, more than $4.5 million a year, we're only capturing about $670,000 of actual money that could go towards any overhead. Uh, if you're looking at the screen here with me, you can see that our salaries are more than our gross margin. So we have a 15% pad, but we spend 17% in salaries. And as a result, we are losing money. Uh, we've lost about half a million dollars on the year, right? And so what I would do for a, um, if I was reviewing this, if this was my business, is I would try to understand how each of these KPIs, what's my profit? How does that compare to the industry, right? How does my advertising, my total advertising, advertising budget compare to what the industry probably should be? Um, these guys are off base on both of those KPIs. Something that I've talked about in some other videos, I just want to bring to your attention. If you're looking for the one of the simplest ways to understand how healthy your business is, is if you just take that cost of goods sold line of your profit and loss. So like literally what it takes me to, to source land my products what's my landed cost to get sold for the year and i add that to the total marketing budget needed the tacos the total advertising cost of sales the sum of those two rows if this is a seller accountant pnl it's going to be row five thousand that's product cost to get sold and somewhere just below the five thousand for the marketing cost the sum of those two rows gives me a great insight into how healthy my business is um, now, the one that I'm showing you now, this first example, is not healthy because they're spending too much. Um, if I if I have 50% COGS, I can't afford an additional 27% in marketing. Those are in, There's incongruity in those two metrics. I've got to do something better. And if I have really low margins, I can't afford salaries that are above those margins, right? And so if you and I were coaching this particular seller, 
the kinds of things that we would say, hey, 2023 has taught us that we can't afford the marketing budget we have, and we can't afford the salaries that we have, and we probably need to go try to renegotiate our supply chain to get better margins on our products. I mean, those, those are things that are easier said than done, but those are kind of the three things that matter. Our business model isn't going to be sustainable unless we um, cut our expenses, cut our marketing, or make it more effective, and find ways to negotiate better terms on our product. Now let me show you another example uh, that's more on the healthy side of things. Uh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and just zip this up here. Okay, here we go. So if you look at this PL, now this is what you'd call kind of a dream scenario. This is one of seller accountants' clients. We've uh, we've uh, you know again done about five million in revenue for the year. That's great. Um, but now our land of cost to get sold are like twenty three percent. We've got a clear understanding of our logistics. We've got a clear understanding of our Amazon and other marketplace fees. And our total advertising load, that marketing load is like 9%, right? And so instead of getting 15% in PAG, which is what the first example had, the second one has 34% in PAG, double the margins. And then the first example had a gigantic chunk of overhead this second business has less than 2% in total overhead, <laughs> literally from 20% to 2%. Almost the same revenue, by the way. Annualized, this is almost the exact same business in terms of top line revenue. One of them is going to clear a profit of $1.6 million or 32% of their total sales. The first one that we looked at is going to lose half a million dollars. And so again, if I'm if I'm the second client here, what did 2023 teach me? It teaches me that I'm doing a lot of things really, really well, and I have some budget to double down. I have some budget to open new channels. I have I have some budget to pursue some new ideas that might allow me to expand my offerings and try to get to 10 million, try to get to 15, 20 million in in, in revenue. And so again, the spirit of this, guys, is you got to look at real numbers that can't lie to you. Because I, I will say this, sometimes you look at the crappy picture, like the first one we looked at, and you can try, because the accounting is not clear here, right? This is one where, you know, we're hoping that at some point they'll hire a seller accountant. We'd love to fix this accounting. But the accounting is just confusing enough that it would be really tempting for you and me to be like, well, 2023 is just an anomaly. I don't really have to listen to this data. It's going to be just fine. Right, And as a result, we actually might um, do more harm to our business in that scenario because we aren't making the adjustments needed. When you're looking at real numbers, then you can do what these two guys need to do. The first guy that had the bad business is going to need to cut expenses and find ways to get more margin. The second guy who's crushing it is going to need to find ways to be more aggressive in 2024. And if I'm his CFO, my forecasting tactic is radically different for business A versus business B. And so I just wanted to kind of point that out to you. For, make sure you have accurate numbers. Make sure you listen to what that data is teaching you. What did 2023 teach you? And build that financial review into your 2024 planning so that you can make the right adjustments, the right pivots, put the pedal to the metal when you need to, take the, um, take the foot off the accelerator when you need to. So again, I hope your annual planning is a gigantic success. I just want to challenge you. If you've made it to this point in this short video or listening to this short episode on your podcast feed, do yourself a favor and plan something. The best business expense your company can can pay here in the month of December is what is it? Five hundred bucks for you to go get a cabin or an Airbnb somewhere alone where you can process, uh, pray, journal, think, plan, envision and learn from what 2023 has taught you so that when we launch into 2024, we can make it the best year ever and, and, and instead of like letting it happen to us, okay? Hope you guys have a great uh, rest of your few weeks here, rest of the year. Hope Q4 is crushing it for you. I'll see you guys.